Welcome to Game Night at the Shelby County Reporter. Davis Potter, sports intern, Wesley Hallman, sports editor here with you. We're entering week three of the playoffs, and we've got three big matchups on Friday night. First, we're going to start off by taking a look at Briarwood Christian, who's going to host undefeated Fort Payne in a Class 5A playoff game this week. Davis, you were there last week and saw the Lions pick up a 21-14 win over Walker. What's your take on this week's game? Yeah, that, that game was kind of a game that could go either way there for uh, Briarwood. You know, is that you know this is what you expect in the playoffs. You know, a neck and neck game where you know either the game could go either way for either team. And uh, you know, you have to feel good really for Briarwood running back Sam Whitaker. You know, he had uh, scored the late touchdown there with less than two minutes to play to you know break the tie and give them the win eventually. Uh, but you know, he had fumbled a couple times uh, deep in Viking territory. I think one was right outside the red zone. The other one was inside the ten yard line. Uh, you know, really costing the Lions a chance to really, you know, pull away and, and take control of that game. But all around, just, you know, a good, a good contest, you know, like we talked about, just a hard-fought game that you that you expect to see in, in, in the playoffs, especially this late, going into the corner finals this week. Uh, but, you know, Broward's going to be challenged. You know, Fort Payne, obviously, like you said, undefeated. Uh, they've looked strong all year. Uh, you know, so we'll see what the Lions can do. But I think this win, you know, over over a Walker team that really challenged them for the first time in a while, you know, the Lions kind of coasted through their first round playoff win uh, over Mortimer Jordan. But now, you know, pulling out this game late, you've got to give them all kind of confidence going into uh, this quarterfinal game with Fort Payne. And I think, you know, whoever can minimize their mistakes probably come out on top. It definitely should be an interesting matchup, Davis. We've got a Fort Payne team that, looking at their results, they've got a really strong yeah. defense. They haven't given up many points this season. Probably one of the top two or three defenses that Briarwood will face this year. It's going to be interesting to see if Ben Craft can continue yeah. his success at quarterback. And as you mentioned, Whitaker can run the ball effectively. Uh, I think that's going to be the key because we know this Briarwood defense mm -hmm. is strong. They've shown week in, week out that they're up for the challenge in the playoffs. It should be a great game on Friday night. In another big game this week, Davis, we've got Coosa Valley Academy playing for a state championship. The Rebels are going to be playing Sumter Academy in the Alabama Independent Schools Association Class 1A championship game. Coosa Valley Academy beat Sumter Academy earlier in the year to seal a region championship. Much bigger stakes are on the line in Friday's game, Davis. Do the Rebels have a chance to win a state championship? Yeah, they got a good chance as anybody. And, you know, this is a team that's kind of been battle tested, too. You know, like we talked about with Briarwood, they've been in these close games that, you know, these, these situations where they had to come through. And that showed on Friday night when, you know, on their last drive of the game, when they had to uh, have a. Uh, you know, a touchdown drive there when they were down 10 to 9. You know, they come through converting a fourth down and then eventually uh, capping that drive with a four yard John Bull and touchdown run to, to eventually give them the win and advance into the state championship. Where you talked about it, that they'll have a rematch against Sumter Academy, a team they beat earlier this year. But this is a different Sumter Academy team. You know, this is a Sumter Academy team that knocked off Jackson Academy last week 35 to 14 uh, to advance. And that Jackson Academy team. You know, knocked off Crenshaw Christian earlier in the playoffs, twenty to fourteen. And this is a Crenshaw Christian team that you know, knocked off Coosa Valley uh, earlier, shut them out er earlier in their in their regular season finale before the playoffs. So you know, this is this is a very good uh, Sumter Academy team, a different win, I believe, than when uh, Coosa Valley you know knocked them off by a couple of touchdowns earlier this year. So I think you know this will be a dog fight, and you know this is you know playoff playoff games right here. You know, whoever can minimize their mistakes, whoever can you know. You know, limit their penalties. You know, you have to in these games. You know, your ex mistakes get magnified even more. So, you know, the team that can kind of limit hurting themselves, I think, will come out on top in this game. It should be a great matchup. Earlier in the year, Coosa Valley had success in the passing game. John mm -hmm. Bolin passed for roughly 170 yards and two touchdowns. It'll be interesting to see if they can continue that yeah. this week. John had a big game last week. He'll be he'll be the go-to guy on offense, running and passing. If Coosa Valley is going to have success, should be a great matchup. Coosa Valley has a chance to win the county's first state championship since Shelby Academy did in 2006. The Davis, we saw one team end its season last week in the second round of the playoffs. Spain Park had the big rematch with rival Hoover. Jaguars gave everything they had but came up short 30-10 to in a loss at Regents Park. What was your take on that game? Yeah, you know, like you said, brought their season to an end. Obviously a tough loss. But, you know, the Jaguars don't have anything to hang their heads about. And I think, 
you know, Coach Bergeson, who, who stepped in as interim coach, you know, before the season started, he kind of alluded to that after the game, you know. Uh, they don't have any anything to, to really, you know, hang their heads about or, or, or be discouraged about it. And, you know, I don't think anybody thought this was going to be a playoff team. After watching this team stumble out of the gate, you know, lose their preseason Dan Bree uh, bad to Auburn, then come out and lose two straight to open the season, you know, the first week to Grayson Georgia, the second week to the set, this Hoover team, and, you know, that was a 44 to nothing shutout. Uh, just looked like they didn't have any life, but, you know, they come back, they, you know, in this playoff game, you know, make, make it respectable, you know, only losing by 20 points this time to the top team in, in the state, one of the top teams in the country like we talked about. And, you know, the, you know this team is has, you know, been through a lot this year. You know, all, all the off-the-field struggles, all the off-the-field uh, controversy, you know, surrounding Coach David Shores and that whole situation for Coach Bergson and this coaching staff to, to keep these players on track and to, you know, turn them into a playoff team, let, let alone a competitive team a, after that rough start to the first, uh, you know, first part of the season. So, you know, obviously a disappointing end to their season, but, you know, they get a lot of guys with a lot of experience this year, you know, um, quarterback Nick Mullins, he'll be a junior next year, still got two years to come around and lead this offense. You know, you've got playmakers Reed Renegal, Zach Michaels on the outside that really stepped up for them at the end of the year and really were go-to guys, key cogs in that offense. So, uh, you know, a lot of things to be excited about for, uh, you know, the Jaguars going forward. It, it just wasn't their night on Friday night. It certainly is a bright future for the Jaguars. As you mentioned, Davis, a majority of that team's yeah. coming back next year. And with what they accomplished this year, you've you got to look out for mm -hmm. them to even take another step forward in 2011. And Ben Bergeson, for a first-year head yeah. coach stepping in in the adversity that he did, incredible job by yeah. that coaching staff. Like you said, it was tough to imagine this Spain Park team being a playoff team yeah. after you know three weeks into the season. But incredible turnaround. They, you know, had an incredible season. As you mentioned, you know, we saw Nick Mullins grow up at quarterback. Defense has got a lot of young stars that are going to be coming back next yeah. year. They're going to be a, a, you know, a good team in Region Six again next year. And uh, you know, they've got this experience under their belt. They could, they could give Hoover an yeah. even better test next year. Check back next week to see if Briarwood is still alive in the playoffs and if Coosa Valley was able to win a state championship. I'm Wesley Hallman. And I'm Davis Potter. And this has been Game Night at the Shelby County Reporter.